Hi everyone and welcome back to my series learning how to code video games edition. Today we're going to be learning a game or coding a game called Taco Delight. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'm already at the Scratch website so scratch.mit.edu. Uh, I'm going to hit the create button because we're going to be creating a brand new game today. I'm going to get rid of the tutorial because I'm doing the tutorial today. I'm also going to get rid of the cat, so goodbye to the cat. I'm going to hit the garbage can right there, garbage can. And I'm going to get a brand new sprite. And you can choose whatever you want when it's your turn. Uh, but just give me a few minutes so I can show you what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to click here. This is where you choose your new sprites. And again, you can choose whatever one you want today. When it's your turn, for me, I'm going to choose the gobo right there. So I'm going to double click gobo. So there's my gobo sprite. Fantastic. If you remember from our last lesson, we always want to make our character be able to move around left and right and all that kind of stuff. And here's how we did it last time. When the space key is pressed, so let me make this a bit larger so you can see. When the space key is pressed, now of course I made this the right arrow. And then I said move 10 steps. Perfect, right? So right arrow, move 10 steps. Wonderful. You know what? I don't really like this move 10 steps feature. I use it really for the younger kids. There's a much better and more powerful way. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Goodbye, I'm gonna drop it over there and dump it. Wonderful. Hey, I don't know if you've ever played games like Battleship, where on one side they have letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then on the bottom they have numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can choose your coordinates by saying A4, C3, and all that kind of stuff. Well, we're gonna use those same kind of coordinates to help our characters move around in a much better way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the computer's X and Y coordinates. And X's go left and right, Y's go up and down. So watch how I code this. So I'm in the motion. When the right arrow key is pressed, I'm gonna just go down to the bottom here, change X right there. When the right arrow key is pressed, I want Gobo to change his X coordinate by 10. So look what happens. He goes to the right. Fantastic. Now I'm going to do it again. When the left arrow key is pressed, left arrow key, change his X coordinate by negative 10. So I'm going to go to the motion, change X by negative 10 right there. Negative 10. Fantastic. So right and left. Perfect. So that's how it goes right and left. Now I'm going to make him go up and down. Watch how I do that. Space bar, whoops, space bar. And I'm going to say up arrow key. Now I'm going to go to the motion. I'm going to go down a bit. Change Y by 10. So now he should be able to go up. So you can't do that with the move 10 steps. You can't go up or down. That's why this is so much better. And now to go down, when the down arrow key is pressed, change y by negative 10 so right there negative 10 fantastic now my gobo should move left right up down perfect so teachers if you could pause in a moment students your job is to go to scratch.mit.edu you're going to hit the create button that was up here you're going to get rid of the tutorial x that out then you're going to get rid of the cat so hit the garbage can for the cat then go over here and choose a new sprite, whichever one you want. I chose Gobo. You can choose whatever one you want. And then code it so that your Gobo can go right, down, left, and uh, uh, up, down, left, and right using the X coordinates and Y coordinates. Remember, X's go left and right. The Y's go up and down. And so teachers, if you could pause here. Students, if you get stuck, please, please look at my code and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, next. Well, hey, you might remember from our last lesson that your gobo could end up going right off the screen and no one would be able to see it and or know what to do. So we always give our characters a starting spot and I'm gonna do that now. So when the green flag is clicked, I want the gobo to go to zero, zero, which is the middle of the screen. So go to right there under motion and I'm just gonna put in the numbers zero and zero perfect so when i hit this green flag the gobo should go to the center of the screen perfect wonderful now i'm going to go get a nice backdrop because right now i got a plain white backdrop it's kind of boring you can choose your own backdrop in a few minutes when it's your turn but just let me do mine first and you can watch how i'm doing things 
So you can choose whatever backdrop you want. There's a whole bunch to choose from. I think I'm going to choose the jungle backdrop right there. Perfect. So next, we need to get another sprite. And this is where you click your sprites. I'm going to choose a different sprite. You can choose yours in a few minutes, whatever one you want. For me, it's going to be the taco today. And that's why the game is called Taco Delight. So taco, taco right there. Perfect. Oh my, the taco is humongous. I need to shrink the taco. So right now the taco is 100%. I'm going to make the taco maybe 40%. Perfect. I'm also going to shrink the gobo. He's pretty big. He's 100%. I'm going to make him smaller, maybe 70%. Wonderful. Now I'm going to code it so that the taco glides to a random position forever. And you notice here's the gobo code. I'm going to click on the taco, but don't hit the garbage can or you'll lose your character. Now I'm going to code it so the taco glides to a random position. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to go to the motion, glide, glide, right there. Glide to a random spot, and I'm going to have him do that forever. Perfect. So when the green flag is clicked, the go or the um, taco should glide around to a random place forever. So, students, now it's your turn. You're going to make sure your gobo has a starting spot, zero, zero. You're going to go get a nice backdrop. I chose a jungle. You choose whatever one you want. And then you're going to choose another sprite here. I chose the taco. You can choose whatever you want. And then code it so that your taco glides for a, uh, a one second to a random position. And teachers, if you could pause it here, and when you're ready to go, I will show you the next trick. All right, so far so good. Hey, look what happens when I hit the green flag. My taco's gliding around, I'm moving my gobo, and I'm trying not to get hit by the taco. But look what happens when you do get hit by the taco. Nothing. Nothing happens at all. Something should happen if you get hit by the taco. That's what a, the games are all about. So let's do it so that when the, the gobo gets hit by the taco, something happens. Watch how I do that. I'm going to go to the gobo. This is the gobo code. I'm just going to move it over a bit. Now I'm going to code it like we did yesterday, the space bar trick. So if I get hit by the taco, my color will change, I will whirl, I will do all that kind of stuff. It's kind of fun, this part. You're going to enjoy this part. So look how I do it. Again, I'm on the gobo. Green flag. When the green flag is clicked, if, if touching, right? If touching the taco. So I'm going to go get an if statement. I think they're here under the control button right there. If, right there. Perfect. When the green flag is clicked, if touching taco, touching is a sense, like hearing and seeing, it's under the sensing button right there, senses. Touching, I know it says mouse pointer and I'm gonna change that in a minute, but look, I'm gonna grab this one touching and when I hovered over this little space, it's gonna turn white. Do you see how it's white? And then I let go and it pops right in there. Perfect. So I'm on the gobo. When the green flag is clicked, if I'm touching the taco so hit this little tiny arrow right there taco if touching taco then do the color trick that we did yesterday so looks scroll down change color effect okay wonderful let's just test it out so when a green flag is clicked if i'm touching the taco then my color is going to change by 25 green flag and go oh nothing's happening i'm supposed to be changing colors Nothing. Hmm. Well, the computer is doing exactly what I told it to do. I told the computer to check when the green flag is clicked. Well, it wasn't touching when the green flag is clicked and the computer never checked again. We have to tell the computer to check over and over like a hundred times a second. So look how I do that. I'm going to go to the control. I'm going to grab this forever. So forever check to see if touching the taco and if it is touching the taco then change the color effect so now look when the green flag is clicked the computer is going to forever check to see if i'm touching the taco and if i am then my color is going to change ready green flag go oh see that my color is changing oh come on there we go see that ay yeah yeah i'm good at coding these games but i'm not very good at playing these games yikes i'm getting hit like crazy okay ah Hey, look, we can even add more. Instead of just the color change, I'm going to go to the looks. I'm going to also get another color one. And I'm going to change maybe the uh, pixelate or the ghost or the whirl. I like the whirl, so I'm going to change the whirl. 
So if I get hit by the taco, uh, I'm going to get my color change and I'm going to do a change of whirl effect. So let's see how that looks. Ready? Green flag, go. Oh boy, hit right off the bat. Look at that. Every time I get hit, my color and whirl are going to change. There we go. Perfect. So now it's your turn. Um, set it up so that if your gobo is touching the taco, you're going to change color, whirl, pixelate, mosaic, ghost, whatever. And have the computer forever check to see if you're touching the taco. And again, the touching is under the senses here. And the color change, world change is all under looks. So teachers, if you could pause here and when the students are mostly caught up, I'm going to show you the next trick. So pause now and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, next thing. I hope that's working well for you. I think you're going to like this trick. Hey, in most games, you have some kind of points or health or lives or something like that. I think we should do that for our game, add some points or health or lives. It's really easy to do, although the first time is a little bit tricky. Watch how I do that. I'm going to go to this button. It's called variables. I don't think we've used that one yet. So I'm going to click on variables and I'm going to make a variable. See that right there? Make a variable. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to call a uh, variable something lives. No, 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 no. I'm going to call it health. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it health and press OK. So there's my health. You see that? You can move this around anywhere you want. I kind of like it up at the top right there. So I'm going to leave it right there. Perfect. There's my health. So now I'm going to code it. I'm going to get another green flag. You can have many, many green flags. When the green flag is clicked, I want my health to start at 20. So I'm going to go to the variables. So at the beginning of the game, set my health to 20. Perfect. Wonderful. So look, when I hit this green flag, my health should go to 20. I've set the health to 20. Ready? Green flag and perfect. Good. Ouch, I got hit already. So now we're going to set it up so that when you get hit, you also lose a point. Okay? So watch how I do that. So when a green flag is clicked forever, if touching the taco, remember we change color, we change roll and all that stuff, we're also going to change the health. I'm going to put that in right there. Change health by minus one. So take off a point every time I get hit. So look, um, green flag, set the health to 20. Whenever I get hit by the taco, my color is going to change. I'm going to whirl and I'm going to lose a health. Ready, green flag and go. Okay, let's see what happens when I get hit. Oh, see that? I changed color, whirl, and I'm losing lives too. Perfect. However, there's one glitch. Look, when I get hit, I lose a lot of points. Already, I'm down to like seven points. I've only been hit twice. So I have a little trick for that. You know what happens, eh? The taco is going through the uh, gobo really quickly. The computer can count fast. So I'm losing tons and tons of points. So look, I have a little trick for that. After I lose a point, I'm going to go to the looks. I'm going to have the gobo say something just for, for, for a second. Say, ouch. There we go. So when I get hit by the gobo, my color changes, my world changes, my health changes by negative one, and then I say ouch for one second. By including that ouch there, the computer stalls. It doesn't count for a whole second. And so that gives the taco time to move away and I don't lose so many points. Let's just test this out. Ready? Let's see what happens. Yep, see that? I got hit, my color changed, I lost only one point because I said ouch. So now is your time to add some points and you could call it health or lives or whatever you want. And you do that by going to the variables button there. You click make a variable and then green flag, set your health or whatever you call it to 20 or 30 or 40 and set it up so that when the green flag is clicked forever, if touching the taco, you're going to lose a health negative one and you're going to say ouch for one second. So teachers, if you want to pause it here for a moment, and students, if you're stuck, please, please look at my code, and I'll see you in a few minutes for the next trick. All right, I hope you're enjoying this game. We're almost done. I think this is the last set of tricks I have for you. Hey, look what happens when I hit the green flag. So the taco starts moving right away. You know, somebody playing your game, they wouldn't know what to do. Are they supposed to catch the taco? Are they supposed to hide from the taco or what? So you should always give some instructions at the beginning of the game. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go to the looks button and have Gigas talk a little bit. He's going to, she's going to say something. So you can put it at any of these green flags. I'm going to put it right here. So when a green flag is clicked, have Gigas say something like this. 
use the arrow keys to avoid the taco. There you go. And I'm going to have Giga say that for a little bit longer than two seconds, maybe five seconds, so that everyone has time to read it. So let's see how that looks. Perfect. Hey, but once again, that taco is floating around while I'm trying to read. It's distracting. So I'm going to go to the taco. And before it starts gliding forever, I'm going to have the taco wait for five seconds. So, whoops, it's under control right there. Wait for five seconds, then forever glide to a random position. So when I hit the green flag, the taco should be waiting. It is. And Giga is giving uh, instructions, which she is there. Perfect. So then you can start playing the game. Hey, if you want to make the game easier or harder, remember, you can make Giga bigger or smaller. For example, if I make Giga 50%, it's a lot easier to avoid the banana. If, um, or sorry, the taco. You can also change the speed of the taco. So, right now the taco is gliding for one second. If you make the taco glide for three or four seconds, it's going to be a lot easier. If you make the taco glide for something like 0.3 seconds, that's going to be a lot harder. It's, it's going to go really fast. So I hope you enjoyed this game. And I am looking forward to our next class where I will be showing you uh, a drawing kind of game. You're going to like this one. So thank you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.